All right, welcome back. Welcome back to another fabulous networking video. We're still working with those junipers, and as promised, it's now time for that router config. So without further ado, here we go. Now before we dive straight into uh, routers, let's talk a little bit more about that switch. There was something that I wanted to show you uh, that I didn't quite get to because of all the blue screen problems. Uh, so if we were, if you remember right, we were working with uh, VLANs and we had a very simple topology. We were just working with a switch that has multi-layer capability and among those capabilities is the ability to route between VLANs. And so here's our basic config. And so I just took a, a port or two, put it inside a particular VLAN, gave that VLAN an ID, a tag, and then um, made that VLAN a layer three interface. And then just sort of associated all of them together, gave it an IP address, and then off we go. And the minute uh, you give a VLAN a layer three interface, or make it a layer three interface, and give it an IP address, it knows and understands that it's got a route. And then you commit it, and that's how we got the whole thing to work. All right, so that was our basic configuration. So two VLANs, two IP addresses, two layer three interfaces, and off we went. And then the blue screens happened. So uh, what I didn't get to show you is life without individual ports, or maybe if we say that a better way, life with groups, which is much easier to work with. So I had, um, in the middle of all that nonsense, I, um, I managed to scrag the, the config on the switch, and so I had to do some recovery so I could do this video for you today. Uh, and so I did a couple of things. Uh, one was work with groups, and then I recreated those VLANs. Now, working with individual ports can be a real pain. You can imagine that if you're on a 40 port, uh, 48 port switch, you sure don't want to go into each individual port and tell it uh, what VLAN it's going to be a part of, particularly with the, the commands on the Junipers being somewhat lengthy at times. So what you can do instead is create a, um, a group. And so to recover, I don't know if you, if you noticed in the last video, all my, all my Ethernet switching was gone because I was, I had fat fingered something. And then before I could, uh, go back, uh, the blue screen started happening. And I just said, ah, I threw my hands up in the air and walked away. Uh, so, uh, what we, what I did in this case was I said, well, I'm going to create this, uh, interface range called all ports. Now this is, I could have just recovered the config, but I wanted to demonstrate, uh, groups for you. So I created a, a group called all ports and then put all of the ports on the switch in that particular group. And then I went and said into the group, I said interfaces, interface range, all ports, unit zero, family, ethernet switching, and then hit enter and then mystically, magically pressed, oh, they're all back. Now there are other ways to recover this. I just wanted to demonstrate uh, groups. Okay. The other thing that I had to do was to tell the switch that it wasn't going to be doing any layer three stuff again. So um, I went in and deleted those layer three interface uh, commands. So in the end, uh, this is sort of the config that's important to us at this point. Um, remember that in the VLANs, you have a VLAN tag. And then I created two more groups, a three net range and a two net range. And what I did was I took all of the ports in these ranges and just stuck them in the VLANs. And that's a much easier way to do it than going into the, into, uh, <laughs> excuse me, into the individual ports and doing it. Now, the really cool thing about groups is that you can use them for all kinds of things. They're just a container that's a collection of ports. And once you have the container, you can apply it to all kinds of configurations. So it's very, very handy. Hint, hint, wink, wink to my 342 students out there. Okay. Um, and then there's the, you see the, the, uh, the lines that I deleted from the config. And then, of course, you commit the whole thing and off you go. Now, when all was said and done, uh, this is what I wound up with. All of the uh, other ports that I wasn't using, those are all back in the, uh, the default VLAN. And then I've got the 3NET and the 2NET uh, with the VLAN tags 2 and 3. And then all of those ports, I just sort of swept them into those particular VLANs. So very, very handy thing to remember. And that's one way to recover a config, too. Okay, let's do this router thing. All right, so this is the topology that we're going to work with now. Remember that the switch is not routing anymore. It doesn't have any Layer 3 interfaces at all. So I moved those IP addresses up to the router. And we're working with a J2350 that has a couple of gig E ports on the front of it. 
So I'm still going to use the same EX4200 uh, switch, but I'm just not doing any routing with it. And then, so I've got my two networks, the 2-net the and the 3-net there on the bottom. And that's how our basic configuration is set up. So pretty straightforward. Seems like it ought to be really easy to do. So on a Cisco, if we were going to compare these, what would we do? Well, we'd go into the individual interfaces, we'd give them IP addresses, and then we would do no shut. Now remember, we don't need to do the IP routing command because this is not a router, or this is not a switch we're talking about, it's a router. So we don't have to do that. And then we would just uh, repeat that process over however many interfaces we're working with. All right, so let's try that on a, on a Juniper. That ought to work pretty well. We'll just do the Juniper version of those commands. So we're going to do the set interfaces command. I go into the individual interface and give it an IP address. And then we're going to go ahead and commit that, and we ought to be in good shape. However, what we find out is that it doesn't work. So this is the configuration that we have at this point. We go ahead and do that, and we say, well, that looks okay to me. And if I do a show interfaces command, it tells me that the interfaces are up, that it's got link and everything else. I see my lights going blinky blinky, but I can't get traffic through. Now, it turns out that a lot of Cisco or a lot of Juniper chassis, we have to work with the security settings before we can do anything. And so that's what I have to sort of show you. That's the that's the magic here. So we're going to do two things. We're going to work with a zone. Now zones are something on Juniper. This is uh, probably a topic for more than just a video on YouTube. But uh, the zones on a Juniper are there to create, uh, you can sort of say, uh, trusted and untrusted areas, um, different levels of security. But the idea is that you have services and protocols um, communication types that you're allowing in and out of a particular zone. Now you can create as many zones as you want. You can name them anything you want. You can manipulate the uh, files. You can delete zones. Um, in fact, when I was recovering the router config, I had to delete some zones that were on there because they were just sort of, uh, you know, uh, confusing things a little bit. So we can see here that in, under the zone itself, I've got um, that I'm allowing certain kinds of, of services and you can see that the interfaces themselves are also tied to the zone. So on the right hand side here you can see a little bit bigger version of a of a configuration. And on the left hand side you can see that um, once we allow particular kind of traffic uh, into the interface and we allow a certain set of protocols and maybe a certain set of services, once we do that, commit the changes and after that, pings away. Everything works just fine. So that is the extra step that a lot of times you'll have to take. Make sure that not only are your IP addresses set up and the interfaces know who they're supposed to be, but also that you don't have any security settings preventing your traffic going in. By the way, once this was done, I was able to ping the interfaces. I was able to ping across the router. Now let's just take another look at our, our zone. So you can actually take a peek at the security zones. And you can see that in this case, I, there's the, the sort of the default uh, one. And then there's the trusted and untrusted zones that we had set up for this particular demo. Um, and again, you can create uh, as many zones as you want and, and have different levels of uh, security in each one of them. And there you have it. That is your basic Juniper router config. And that should work for most... Uh, most straight up routing cases. Now, I will just caution you, of course, that when you allow all protocols or all services, you're asking for trouble. So be wary when you're allowing any and all traffic through your routers. Well, that'll about do it for this particular video. Thanks very much for watching. Uh, as it says here, this will probably be my last video for the semester. We are coming into a busy time in the semester, right? Graduation, lots of grading, projects, etc., etc. So uh, this will be my last one for the semester, but I've got a lot of stuff going on this summer, and I hope to document some of that with you here, some SDN stuff and maybe some uh, sensors and things like that. Uh, but until then, may your packets always reach their destinations. And hey, this is networking. You can do this.